everybody else, Mark Campbell to be specific. Thank you for your question. I have a few candidates that I want to show you what I do when it comes to the process of removing the sheaths from my pseudobulbs. Now, normally I wait to remove them until the pseudobulb has fully matured, but I try to avoid getting the sheath super dry. I don't like it when it's so dry, it becomes really tough, especially on Brassavola hybrid or any kind of Brassavola. They are very, very thin growing, but the sheath is super, super tough. Makes sense. There's a lot of protection required. And I prefer actually to get them before they get dry, why they still have this look about them. Let me show you. Sorry about the wind. You see this sheath here, not a Brassavola, this is a Luminosa. It is sort of yellowy, but there's still some moisture in it. So it's easier to get it off and also helps the leaf to come out. I can remove this sheath much easier with the thin membrane underneath while it's still somewhat wet, alive, however you want to call it. It comes off super easy and almost like in one piece instead of having to peel it off bit by bit. So I like it when it's just, it, not when it's green, that's too soon, but when it's just turning in its structure, you can see it's still sort of transparent. There's still some give to it and it makes for super easy removing of the sheath. If I don't catch it in time, and usually during the summer, I am not able to get to the sheaths as they come because I'm quite busy with doing all the other kind of maintenance that summer requires. And you see here, there's like a membrane. If I want to get that off, it's not necessary. I just take a quick knife, very sharp into the point there, and then I can strip it. But usually in the summer, I don't get around to it. So my sheaths do somewhat get dry. Now, I don't fuss with the really fine stuff because I could be causing damage to a very, very, as yet, not matured, full out grown bulb. But I do give it a little bit of a cut so that afterwards it just starts to peel off. And then with a little bit of rubbing, it just kind of scales off bit by bit. But with a, thicker sheaths. I've missed the mark here. Let me make sure you can see that. You see here I've missed the mark. This one's already quite dry. So I can go in and kind of pull it. You know, it's not as woody dry as others that I'm going to show you, but it becomes more difficult. And especially on these thin ones, I don't want to be yanking away on this very, very tough texture. And I'm not trying to block the camera here, but that's when I just go in and just kind of cut it away. Maybe I won't get all the way down to the bottom, but at least I've got enough of rid of it to make sure that if there are any pests, or for example, when it comes to too much humidity, that it doesn't ruin the base, the rhizome area of my orchid. That is the plan. Usually I'm kind of pest free on my Cattleyas and my Brassavolas, so I'm not so concerned about that. It's more about the humidity coming in in the winter and the orchid not drying out quickly enough when watering or flushing. But you see how tough these little strands are. If I had gotten to it on time, I would not have to be fiddling around so much as you saw the other one came off relatively easy. Now I wouldn't do what I just did with the tip of the knife inside if you're expecting buds. In this case I'm not. The growth is far too small for that and it's late in the season and then I just use that little slit there to get in and help me release a little bit more of the sheath. The reason I know this growth is not going to be blooming and I just did what I did with the blades there is because you can see she's in bud on the top. 
So that growth is just going to be another structure that provides roots, but it doesn't amount to blooms. Now, when it comes to the really dried sheaths, as part of my process of cleaning orchids, removing sheaths, etc., I also take a microfiber that has been soaked in an insecticidal soap to like an oil-based wrap seed oil and chrysanthemum seeds, something like that. And this microfiber is absolutely drenched and I wrap it around the super dried sheath so I don't start peeling away on something and then cause damage to my pseudobulb, which also happens to be the one carrying three buds. You can see that in some instances I had started earlier on in the season and I just left the little part, but more the transparent tissue, which is not a problem. You can leave that. I don't see any bugs or anything being able to hide underneath that. And then I just let this soak. It's going to take quite some time. And when it dries out, if it were to like dry out a little bit in between, I take my spray and keep moistening it. So if I'm going to do this anyway, I always do it with insecticidal soap in case anything has lodged some eggs down into the middle there or has tried to plonk itself to hatch at a later stage when it's more forgiving temperature wise. I find that this method with the insecticidal soap wrapping up the sheaths and I do this with all the dr super dried sheaths with the more humid sheaths not quite ready to come off sheaths it doesn't really matter because I can see a clean pseudobulb but with the super dried sheaths I don't know what has had time to nest itself down there if anything at all but in order to get rid of it and remove the sheath it is soaked in insecticidal soap. Now my policy, let me see if I bring you over here. My policy, your next question regarding the sheaths of buds. I leave them. I leave the orchid to do what it needs to do. I am too wary of the circumstances that weather has. I consider the sheaths, they have a purpose to protect the buds, to make sure that while they're immature, that they don't get infested by aphids to ruin the bloom. And for me, there's a reason they are there. And I leave them shut until by their own accord, they do what they want to do. And in my case here on my Maxima, they're splitting on the side. Let me see that I get you better in shot. Can you see that? It's splitting on the side as opposed to on the top. And the buds in there are still very, very young, but it's already starting to do the thing that this sheath wants to do. With these very dried sheaths, they are so brittle that you can hear the crispiness and if there were buds in there, which I think there may be, I'm not sure. This orchid is way overdue from blooming. But if there were buds in there, I would leave it because the buds would be able to come through this material. And I don't want to, if I had cut this prematurely and it wasn't going to bloom, I risk humidity and water and everything else getting in there. And I don't want to do that. So my, my principle with regards to cutting sheaths is if the orchid is struggling, to push buds out of the top of a sheath, then either the orchid hasn't got enough humidity around it, because normally you wouldn't need to cut them because there's enough strength in the orchid, or it is too weak to actually bloom. And then the question is, should it then bloom? Because buds in themselves have plenty of strength to push through this material without any interference from us. It's a matter of personal preference, really. If I have an orchid that is wanting to bloom but hasn't got the strength to bloom and then comes out and, and the sheath won't open, 
if I'm so inclined, because that's why we grow our orchids and we want them to bloom, I will only wait until I see the shadow of the buds right up the tip, right up against the last part of the sheath. If it by then hasn't opened on its own, I just give a little bit of a squeeze on the top to crack the top part, just a fraction. That's all it takes is just to open the top part up. If it is, let's say, if it doesn't give up and, and open up, then I will just snip just the, like the top part up here. If I don't then see my, my orchid blooming or the buds being able to push out, then clearly it is the lack of strength in the orchid and it cannot and shouldn't bloom at that point in time. Honestly, I have never cut buds away from an orchid. That was too weak to push out buds because I want to see the blooms. But I also judge how vigorous is the orchid, how much storage has she got to be able to take on blooming. And if the blooms are then distorted, that's when I cut them off. That's when I make my decision to get rid of that blooming face as quickly as possible in order to make sure that the orchid comes through the other side strong. I don't want to weaken my orchid for blooms that don't, won't look the part. And many will say, well, the blooms will be distorted. If you, if you don't cut the sheaths, then of course it comes out distorted because it's too tough. But then again, you also have to hedge your bets and say, how much humidity is in my environment? Is that a problem that I'm lacking the humidity? And that's why I have to intervene? Or is it because my orchid is too weak and it's a first time bloomer and the buds just can't push through on their own? And then that's a decision process for each orchid individually. And personally, I wait until absolutely the last minute and all I do is give the top a little bit of a squeeze. I'm not gonna do that here now, but you know what I mean, just pinch it a bit and then open up just a fraction and see if the orchid will do the rest. If it won't, if it doesn't come up or undone, just with a little pinch, I snip off the top, but just a fraction and I always wait for the buds to reach the maximum. In my climate, when it does get humid in the winter, in the summer, I don't have that problem then I, I don't want humidity to accidentally linger. And that's just ambient humidity. I'm not even talking downpour or rain showers. Ambient humidity to linger inside the crevice of those buds. Now I can't show you this example anymore because it was here before, but maybe, woo, you saw my video on this funky, weird, Fushu Glory Happy Holiday. There's this one strange, uber strange growth right here that came out stodgy, thick leaf. It's a bifoliate, it shouldn't be like that. But I only had one leaf and then I had the weirdest growth coming out of the center with the oddest, oddest sheath that was so, so tough that I actually sliced the top off the to um, of the sheath. I just like an egg, it was that hard, I cut the top of the sheath off because I wanted to see what the orchid was doing inside. And there was nothing inside, absolutely nothing. Except then it grew out another stubby little tough sheath. I mean, another really thick textured sheath. And I'm like, okay, clearly this orchid is growing through some kind of acclimating process. So I pinched off this stubby sheath and look what it's doing. You can see the buds. They were not in that stubby sheath either. I just thought, you know, this is a dud growth and here is a gorgeous growth. Look at this. This is exactly how the orchid should look. Just like that. And the sheath inside, normal, thin as it should be. But lo and behold, in the back here, when I saw the, this sheath coming out with really sticky, tiny little buds, I'm thinking, all right, it's going to be like a dud blooming. And I just left it. And the reason I left it to observe it is because of how much storage I have in the back of this orchid. I could play with it knowing I've got this fantastic secondary growth already. So I could watch and observe and let it do its thing. And we have buds. 
I am absolutely gobsmacked. And I still don't know whether they're going to amount to anything, but you know, we'll be watching together. So when it comes to the cutting the sheaths of the buds, I, I would just say the orchid itself needs to be able to push those blooms out on their own because there is nothing except a lot of humidity in nature that comes and chops sheaths off. So if your environment is super, super dry and you can see that it's not happening naturally and of its own accord, like with my Maxima here, there's one sheath that is opening, splitting on the side here. And if that is not, something similar is not happening in your environment, maybe there's not enough humidity or maybe the orchid is too weak. And then it's a question of cutting the sheath at the last stage possible. Look at these gorgeous roots. Let's give them a little bit of seaweed. At the last stage possible in order to protect the blooms inside and then just snip off, pinch off the top. So I'm hoping that I covered how I go about things well enough. Here we have an example of what I'm now looking for with regards to this sheath, the suitable sheath. You can see the bottom is already dry and I could take that away at this point and that wouldn't be a problem, but I'm not going to waste your time in doing that right here on camera. But this dry stuff can come off right now. Doesn't need to wait until the rest is dry especially this time of year, which is now mid-November, where I don't want any extra funky humidity on the bottom of my rhizome. That is also why I remove moss from anywhere around the base of my orchids going into winter. And I can move myself up with this sheath bit by bit and then leave it and wait for these sheaths to turn a yellowy off yellow color while they still have substance in them, and then I can take them off. There's one thing, this orchid is now strong enough. Let me just point this out while we wait for the other one to soak. There's one thing about sheaths. Sometimes when the orchid in its growth phase isn't strong enough already in pushing its own growth, these sheaths are tough as nails and they won't let the orchid open its leaves properly. That can be in a unifoliate, just like over there with the luminosa, there, and the leaves stay pinched. And it can be very much more obvious in a bifoliate where you can see if the growth isn't able to push out properly, you will always have like a closed Y as opposed to a bifoliate, very open Y because the sheaths are tough. Same thing, no humidity, less humidity or a weak growth that can't get past the strength of this sheath. And if that is the case, it is not in mine, but if that is the case, I also go in with a very sharp knife and I just nick at the base right here of where the two leaves or the unifoliate leaf comes out and I nick the sheath. Just give it a small little cut so that the growth can continue pushing out and through it. I'm not going to do that in this case because this growth is super strong, but in case you have a weaker one and you can see it's trying, it's trying, and there's so, so much resistance from this protective sheath, give it a nick, leave it on, and let the growth then push through. Only as a last resort is what I always say. And, and a very healthy and strong orchid has the strength to do all of that on its own, including buds. Now, I thought this was going to be a quickie video, but let's do this. Let me get you better in shot. Let's see how, after all that time, how many minutes are we? Yeah, 20 minutes. I mean, look at this. This has been soaking for 20 minutes. And you see how tough this is for a Brassavola much, much tougher than anything else. And it still feels somewhat dry to me. So this is, an, this, is, this is something where the soaking method is so much more forgiving than going at it 
and peeling away on a dry sheath with very, very thin pseudobulbs. Still feels dry, but it's coming much, coming off much better than it would have if I hadn't soaked it. And if you don't want to use insecticide, I mean, water will do, you know? But as I'm doing it anyway, I'm trying to make sure to kill two birds with one stone, and I use insecticide because why not, right? So that's the method, just letting it go for another few minutes. But you get the point, there's still a little bit of a membrane on there. And then I wrap that up and wait for another few minutes and then I can attack that sheath more securely and safely. And enjoy the buds on something that looks a little bit more tidy. So thank you, Mark, very much for your question. I hope that gives you some insight on my practice, what I do why I do it, and apart from the fact that orchids will always end up surprising us in one way or another, it has 99% of the time worked for me. If I cut a sheath too soon, I don't know how strong my orchid is. It's part of getting to know how an orchid, for me, would perform in different kind of circumstances. But if it doesn't bloom because of the sheath, that has nothing to do with it. Cutting a sheath will not induce automatic blooming. It has nothing to do with it. It's like in my Maxima, for example, it's possibly that I repotted her, that she's throwing a strop. And fair enough, I might only get one sheath to bloom because one is really chubby, but it's very airy. Maybe there's no buds in there, but look at all the roots I'm getting right on time. So I might forfeit blooming this year, but my orchid is going to be much better off for it long term. Strong orchids, no intervention required. Weaker orchids, some intervention required, but only marginal, like a nick or right at the top. That's how I do it. Mark, thank you very much for your question. I think I've said that before. Maybe I'm now overstaying my welcome on this subject. And everybody else who did watch this video, I thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. I don't know how other people do it. I don't know what considerations they take if they cut or don't cut. For me, it's just orchid by orchid decision. But once the decision is made, those are the reasons why I make them and when I do and how. I appreciate having your company and your faith in me with this question. I hope I did it justice. Have a wonderful day. Take care, stay safe. Bye.